Hey everyone, and welcome back to Salesforce Mojo. Today we're gonna to be talking about B2B commerce integration adapters. Now, as we've been progressing throughout the series, we've kind of slowly been building up to this point where we're trying to get a fully functioning storefront. So today we're gonna to be taking a big step forward by actually talking about those integration classes through checkout, and we'll be working through setting up a couple of them today. Now let's dive straight in. Now, before we get too far into the actual setting up of all of the classes and integrations inside of Salesforce, I thought it'd be helpful to come back here to the help page and orientate us quickly on what we're going to be doing and how this really works with the checkout experience. Now, we'll give a caveat that there are a couple of different checkout experiences you can do, and I think we've previously talked just a tad bit about this, but just to give a high-level overview here, there is the what they're calling now as a legacy checkout. And you can see that it's labeled over here as legacy checkout in the help documentation now. But this legacy checkout is actually the one that comes out of the box with B2B Commerce. Uh, when you set up B2B Commerce and you toggle the switch on, uh, this actually uh, is what comes with it. And so it's typically used quite a bit. Now, there are a couple of other options that come inside of the Git repo, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Uh, they're very similar. They, they use kind of that flow based uh, checkout experience. Although the way that they use these adapter classes uh, are a little bit different. Um, so we're gonna go over this example because it's, in, in my opinion, the most commonly used right now, uh, but we may revisit some of the other ones in future uh, videos. Uh, I will say that there are kind of this classification of flow ones that we'll be talking about today, but then there's also some new checkout experiences coming very shortly. Uh, if you are familiar with the B2B2C uh, storefront and experiences over there, uh, you will be familiar with that one page checkout, uh, which we might at some point go over and uh, you know do some videos on. Uh, but that is completely separate, not something we're going to be covering in this video. Uh, we're really focused on kind of these integration classes today. So as we scroll down, we can see that this diagram here does a really good job of kind of showing how the actual flow, the browser, and the integrations work together. Uh, so you can see that as a buyer goes and has a cart and they go into the checkout context, that context always has you know a cart in mind. And as they go through here, there's going to be things that happen inside of Flow. There's going to be things that the user needs to do in the browser, which is the right-hand side here. And then there's going to be things that the integrations need to go out and get information about. Uh, so you can see here that there are a few different integration points um, there's inventory, price, shipping, and taxes. Those are some of the standard ones. However, this is really flexible to be able to do whatever you want with since it's flow. Uh, but these are the ones that come out of the box. So to give an example here, we may be going through checkout and the first thing may be, you know, asking a user what their shipping address is or where they actually want to ship this to. So they select what they actually uh, want to ship it to. And then the next thing that needs to happen is the, the checkout flow needs to go out to this integration class, in this case, inventory, it needs to go check, is there inventory available? Now this inventory class, which is really just an Apex class, can do whatever it wants. It can either go back to Salesforce and look at a field on the product, or it can go out to an external service and get information there, or you know a million other options as well. It just needs to do it in the format that the class is expecting. So that at a high level is what we're trying to accomplish here today. So now let's hop over into Salesforce and I will show you where this information can be found. So first off, I'll, I'll level set and, and show you here because we're now seeing a, a store that's called Tiny Homes. Uh, well, my uh, scratch org expired, uh, so I thought it would be good to set up a more permanent org that I could do uh, this video for a longer term. So now we're gonna be in this more permanent org. You can see the domain is SF Mojo and the store is actually tiny home. So that'll be better for uh, kind of being able to do these videos quickly for you all. So now let's jump into the administration here. Uh, administration is where we're going to find the integration setup uh, procedures here. So as we scroll down, you can see that there are a couple different sections on the left-hand side. And this is where you can go into each one of these integrations I just talked about, and you can really configure which integration you want to be able to connect it to. So we gave the example of inventory before, so let's click into inventory. And you can see it shows a really easy screen here that way you can basically come in and link an integration. Now I've already done a little bit of prep work in here to bring in some of the sample uh, Apex classes and register them. So you can see that because I've already done some of that work, we already have a integration called compute inventory in here. 
and it sells the version, and it sells the type it is, and I can select this and click next, and it will actually attach this directly to my store. So once I click confirm here, this is now attached to my store. You may be thinking, well, how does that actually work? How does it get back to my flow? Is it just you know magic and it just happens? Well, not quite. So let's go back into setup here. And let's go to flow. This will be the first time that we've actually looked at some of these uh, checkout flows here together. So I'll just kind of start us off at the top here. If we scroll down, you're going to see a lot of these process type checkout flows. And these are all the checkout flow types, uh, simply put. And you can see there's a lot of sub flows in here. But there's going to be one main flow, uh, and it usually is up here at the top here, uh, and it's called Checkout Flow Template. Uh, now, this is kind of the starting place for the legacy uh, usage of this checkout flow. Uh, so you can click in here, and then if you're actually doing this in production, which we will um, you know, do this at some point in a future video, we would click Save As here and uh, rename it and you know, give it the right permissions and everything we needed in our storefront. Um, so you can see just to kind of, again, level set here is that it has a big decisioning node here and a lot of different subflows, oops, uh, a lot of different subflows down here that it can kind of switch between. And this allows you to have a reentrant flow, which means that as a user goes into checkout, they get to maybe step two and then they leave and they come back that the cart is always going, or the, sorry, I should say the checkout is always going to know what step do I put that in because there's kind of a session um, object underneath it all saying where that checkout session is actually at right now. So if I left in the shipping cost stage, uh, then I could jump back in right there and you know move back into that checkout flow, which makes it a, a very nice experience. But as we're talking about the integrations here, you can see that there's an inventory subflow. And if I click into this, you can see that we're passing some information over to that inventory subflow, like the card ID, the session ID, the state, and you know what happens next. Uh, all relatively straightforward, but as it refers to the inventory callout, if we go into our inventory subflow, we can see that there is an invocable in here called check inventory. Now this check inventory, the only thing it accepts is the card ID, and this is a completely standard core action here. Um, so really what's happening behind the scenes is that this invocable here is going out to the registered classes of the type of inventory and trying to find if one exists. And if one exists, then it will utilize that, pass the card ID into it, and it will try to process whatever inventory logic you have in there. So from the front end of this, it looks kind of you know like it's just magic and you're just you know plugging this into the administration, it's just going to work. Uh, but I thought it would be helpful to kind of see the mechanisms behind the scenes. So again, going back up to our flow here, uh, you can see that this is the checkout flow. It's going to the inventory subflow right here. It's using that invocable action to go out uh, and grab our class that we've created custom for this, and then eventually, you know, potentially going out even further into other systems from there. So now that we understand kind of the basics of how this all kind of pieces together here, where do I actually start? And you know, are there samples out there? And if I wanted to create my own, what would that look like and how do I get it all set up? Well, that's a good question. And the first place we're gonna go is we're gonna go to our B2B Commerce on Lightning Quick Start uh, GitHub repo again. And this GitHub repo has several really good starting places if you're planning on using this kind of uh, integration methodology here. Now, if you're in the right subfolder here and you can see that we're an example, checkout integration classes. So it's pretty nested down there. But there are a series of classes in here, uh, such as the uh, right here, the B2B check inventory sample, that give you the structure, the framework you need to actually uh, validate this successfully when this call out is made, and also shows you the structure it's expecting for on returns. So this is a really important place to start. And uh, once we have this kind of structure in place, we can really do whatever we want. Um, but as I said, I already did some of this ahead of time. So I'm going to open up my VS code here for our org. And you can see that we have our check inventory in here. And let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger for everyone here. All right. Uh, so you can see that we have you know, a name for it. This name really doesn't matter as long as it implements the specific uh, inventory or pricing or whatever the validation is for 
uh, this actual uh, class we're trying to integrate for. Uh, once it does that, we get to start the process. You know, the cart ID is really important here. And we're going to uh, grab the cart that's associated with uh, the, you know, the checkouts process that we're going through right now. And it's going to kind of grab all the information it needs. And I'm not going to go through every line of this, but just kind of hit the, the big points here. But once it gets through all the validation here to make sure that, you know, things aren't empty and it has all the information it needs, it's going to get to this uh, method down here called get quantities from external service. So if we just, you know, go to try to find the second reference of this. You can see that there's a reference down here, uh, this method called get quantities from external service. Now inside of this method, we really could do whatever we wanted. So let's say for argument's sake that, uh, you know, we had a new service uh, that we wanted to make a call out to, and we wanted to get the inventories back. So if you can see that uh, from this class down here, we are making a call out to uh, B2B commerce test Heroku app. Uh, so this is a, an app that Salesforce has made just to uh, send the information back in the right response. And they've done a good job of kind of, you know, commenting up exactly what this will look like right now. But let's say that, you know, we, we've tested this um, just for testing purposes, and now we wanted to use our tiny home service. Uh, so let's go through what that will actually look like. So First thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this just so that we have kind of a, a baseline. We're going to create a new class and we're going to call it uh, tiny homes check inventory. Okay, and we're going to paste this in here and we're going to bring that back in check inventory. Okay, so now we have the structure in place here. And now if we go down to our get quantities, uh, you know, maybe this is called uh, tinyhomes.herokuapp.com. Now that's not real. So if you try to do this watching the video, it's not gonna work, but just trying to show you that you can make modifications here. Again, another uh, use case is that instead of going out, maybe you keep inventory in like Kugamon inside of Salesforce, or maybe you have a custom field or custom objects attach the product that give you inventory information. That information can all be uh, pulled directly from Salesforce. And as long as you send it back to uh, the checkout flow in the right way with the right structure, everything will be fine. Uh, so you really have a lot of options there. So we now have that in there. You can see there's a little bit of uh, failed logic structure down here in case. Uh, but at the end of the day, once we go out to our external service, get the information, parse it in the right way, send it back to our uh, integration with the right status of success or with any failure messages up here based on different use cases we're good to go so now we've we've saved this on our local uh, drive here we're going to push this up to our instance here now that it's up there we're going to go back to salesforce into administration we'll give a refresh here and we'll go and click edit and it's not here. So this new tiny home integration for inventory isn't showing up. Well, that's because uh, not all Apex classes are valid and able to show up here. So you actually have to do an extra step. So let's actually go back to the documentation. There's another good article down here called set up custom B2B uh, checkout integrations. And uh, there's a little bit of manual work here. And there's a couple of options you could do to actually set this up. I find this the easiest, though. Um, so you can either do this in Workbench or you can do this in um, your know, debug uh, console. Really up to you. Uh, but they've really uh, mapped out kind of the registration processes for these Apex classes. So basically, you're taking a normal Apex class and you're doing this function right here that will basically turn it into a registered external service, which will make it available to be selected in administration. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to Salesforce and I'm gonna open up the developer console. And you go up to debug and open an anonymous window here and you'll paste this in here. So I'm gonna to try to make this a little bit bigger for everyone to be able to see. Uh, so it's going to be doing a lot in this. You only need to do a few things, though. The first thing you need to do is come up to the web store and you need to put in your web store. So mine's tiny homes. It needs to be correct spacing, products, uh, capitals, and all the, the fun stuff because it, otherwise it won't find it. The second thing you need to do is you need to change this to whatever your Apex class is called. So if we go back to VS Code for a second, ours is called tiny home 
tiny homes that should say check inventory. All right, so now we have that in there. The next thing we need to do is make sure that the API version is correct. This is almost always wrong when you copy it from the developer help section. So you need to make sure you know what your version is. Ours right now is 55. So we'll change that. And once we've done that, we only have two more places we need to make changes. And that is the type of provider we're trying to uh, create right now. So if we go back over here to our documentation, we can see that there are four options. There's inventory, shipment, tax, and price. These do need to match exactly what they are in here. So if I go back over here, I am going to change this to inventory. And then the next section we need to change is the name. So this is, they give you some examples right here. We can call these however, whatever we want. So maybe I want this to be uh, tiny homes inventory. Okay. So now if we click execute, it should all work correctly. And you can see there's a lot more down here we're not gonna get into, but it basically is going to do all the magic for us. And if everything was successful, we should get a success back here. And you could definitely dive into this log and, and see the details of exactly what it's doing. But if we go back over to our administration here and give it a refresh and click edit, we now see that there is our current integration and there's the new integration. Uh, so I can click this and click next and confirm. And now whenever we go into checkout, it's going to be using the tiny homes inventory integration instead of the standard one. So one of the things I'll call it here real quick is that you can see that I've selected from one to the other. And you may be thinking, well, does that mean I can only do one integration per type? Yes and no. So you can only do one in this model right here. However, if you need to potentially pull from multiple sources, you could in theory do some of that in your Apex class. There are some flexibility to do with this, but in kind of the point and click right here and how it connects into Salesforce's flow, that is true. You can only do one inventory integration at once and one for the other ones as well. So hopefully that was a helpful, quick overview of the integration classes. Uh, this can get pretty complicated and there are a lot of material out there. So you can see on the right hand side, there's some help references. Um, you definitely will want to click through those. Uh, there's not a ton of great videos out there. So let me know if you think this was helpful. And if you have more questions after you re uh, watch this, I should say, uh, post them in the comments. Uh, looking for more content to definitely create. Um, but definitely give us a like if you like the video and also um, keep giving us your ideas. And I uh, hope everyone has a good day.